Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando. Listen to shows and read reviews online at WCBE.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Kevin Carr. And this is Cinema Classics. Yes, sir. All right, Kevin, let's get back to classics. Yes. You know how I, I get seduced by these newer movies, mm. and we make a connection, and that's pretty much what we do sure. with the past. Now let's take one that is, what, back in 1981? 1981, yeah. And it's called Escape from New York. That's right. <laughs> So, John Carpenter, I know. Kurt Russell, Adrian Barbeau, <laughs> Harry Dean Stanton, whole, Isaac Hayes is in this movie. I know, I know. Lee Van Cleef. <laughs> so you're the only one, maybe besides Wade, who has that, <laughs> that encyclopedic mind that will help get me back there and we can make our connections as we go along. But, Kev, this is a, an action film mm -hmm. by... A, a, an iconic director, I yeah. mean, John Carpenter. John Carpenter. It, it, it's, it's always remembered as an action film. I don't know if I'd characterize it. If you actually listen to Kurt Russell talk about it, he'll remind you there's not a lot of action in the movie. It's, and you are right. Yeah. I, 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 and looking at it again, but then I'll go back to James Bond movies. Sure. And it's still slow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, they have takes that are several seconds that they wouldn't even do these oh, days. Oh, yeah. It's shot typically. What's so fascinating about Escape from New York is, I mean, he kind of start, like, he got to start doing, like, very small films, and then he did, like, Dark Star. But Assault on Precinct 13 was his first one. Okay. The, the big one. Okay. In 1976. And that was an action film. That was a bona fide 70s action right. film. And it wasn't until he did Escape from New York that he kind of dipped his toe in that water again. Uh, and and what's funny is is it's the, the movie changes tones because the, the at the beginning of it it's it feels like a big eighties action film. I mean you've got a hijacking, you've got a plane going down, you've got helicopters, limousines, and they're they're getting all this stuff, high tech stuff. Snake Pliskin, Snake Pliskin, <laughs> and a glider going into. The, and then once he gets into New York, Kurt Russell, this is yeah, he, and then he just kind of. It's just him kind of meandering through the streets. Well, it turns into a very different movie once he gets to New York. You are so right, because when I first saw that Lee Van Cleef was in it, I said, oh boy, yeah. this is going to be nasty. Uh, and they make him a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Mar Mar marginally well, good. Uh, compared he, with him. Well, yeah, he's, he's, not, he's not one of the crazies in New York. He, he <laughs> runs, he's the warden of the prison of New York, I think. And I have to say this, Kev. Ernest Borgnine, what yeah. is he doing? Yeah. People are... Claiming what a great comic role it is, I think he's just re, re, regurgitating stuff that he's done before. Well, it is some kind of him playing a stock character. I know it is. It is. Well, because I mean, Carpenter's never been an actor's director. He 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 cast people <laughs> into type. And and in fact, like Kurt Russell, this was a breakthrough role for Kurt Russell because he was so oh, known right. for for doing all the Disney the stuff, family stuff, yeah. right? I mean, and he wanted something edgy. Boy, this put some money in his bank. Well, it well, and also, well, it didn't start his tenure with, uh, with, with John Carpenter because I think they did that Elvis TV movie. That's a correct. Couple years That's before. Correct. Yeah. But then, of course, then he did The Thing and he did Escape from L.A. and right. he did Big Trouble in Little China. So he worked with uh, John Carpenter yeah. quite a bit. But that's because John Carpenter is the one who gave him a chance to not be clean cut. And and how about Russell as a good bad guy? Well, he's, I mean, he's, he's great as that, that surly yeah. 80s action star. I mean, at the time, he was going up against people like, you know, Sylvester Stallone and, 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 and Charles Bronson. Yeah, those were the right. big stars yeah, back then. Like Schwarzenegger really hadn't even come on the scene yet as, yeah. as an action star. Yeah, that's, that's tough competition. Now, I thought Carpenter might have wasted the sinister uh, Donald Pleasance. Well, he, well, well, Donald Pleasance he's had in... in <laughs> Is that how you say it, Pleasance? I, I, I think so. Okay, that's right. how I, That's how I say it. I don't know if that's how all he right, said it. Right. But, oh. but Donald Pleasance, he, he got to start with Carpenter with um, with Halloween, and that's what he's most iconic. Oh, my for. gosh, yeah. And again, played a bunch of roles, but Donald Pleasance, he, he played what? a much more affluent, uh, you know, affable president. He, he was, he was I on the defensive. Yeah, right, as president. Yeah. Uh, a strange choice. I thought. Street. I mean, it's a little more on the nose when he does Escape from L.A. and he puts Cliff Robertson in there as yes, as, yes. as a manipulating 
type of president. Whereas it feels like Donald Pleasant's character is just kind of an idiot. In a lot of, or he's just overly traumatized. I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, uh, the glider going, you know, mm -hmm. going into the top of the ooh now, ooh, yeah, the trade building. Yeah, wow. twenty years before. Wow, yeah. yeah. Well, in fact, the, the the special effects, you know, a, a very young and unknown at the time, uh, James Cameron. Yes, was a co what a, a visual DP? effects guy. He's, yeah. I mean, he's he's credited as Jim Cameron in there, and oh, is he? The flight scenes where he comes in there and he's going through the. And you got that three, that brilliant three-dimensional wireframe look. He just took like a reflective tape and put it on a model, and then it makes it look computerized. And, and that's that's the kind of like low-tech stuff that I love about a movie like this. That oh yeah, you don't get nowadays. Well, I think even the aerial shots of New York City, they had planned, they had built that and mm -hmm. painted it. Yeah, the set. I mean, this is this is a pretty good stuff going on there. Well, that's where they hand. blew all their budget on the, the effects in the first 20 minutes of the movie. Because no really CGI, right? Well, it didn't exist back yeah, then. I know. Yeah, I know. So if you look at that, those are pretty neat shots. Mm -hmm. And I think especially, I always love the aerial shots of the cities yeah. at, at night. They well, the, the other thing, this is like right in the middle of a, of a brilliant run. If you look at Carpenter's, just his filmography, and you can count Precinct 13, but if you say, if you start from Halloween, through for 10 years to They Live in 1988. He has probably one of the best runs of any director ever in terms of banger hits. You know, maybe the least like the, the least beloved one is uh is it maybe Christine. But that's still not a bad one. Okay, movie. yeah. Well, but everything yeah. else you got the thing, you got Big Trouble in Little China. Well, let us wait darkness. until we get to and have something for our podcast. Oh, our, our, our double take podcast. <laughs> and you're the man for that. Meanwhile, we'll talk about themes oh, yeah. in in uh in, in New York, in Escape from New York. Think of one. Well, obviously, the totalitarianism of the United States and what he fears it could become. Uh, yeah. And this is the first time he really plays around with that. I mean, later on, he does in, like, They Live and, and, and some of his other movies. Yes. But this is the first time where it really kind of forms and realizes as a modern threat. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, he did The Fog, too. He did The Fog, yeah, the year before. Yeah, uh, but... We're post Watergate at this point, and I'm wondering so sure. if there's any uh, the, the despotism uh, that Nixon seemed to bring to that role. Well, that, and I think also, I mean, if you want to talk about the politics of the day, I mean, you're early in the Reagan years, and uh, I mean, and Carpenter has made no qualms about his politics, and that he's that he's very left wing, and so. You know, in seeing what he believes is going to come from the Reagan years, I mean, it's a little bit cartoonish, <laughs> you know, because that's kind of how Carpenter writes. But, um, but, but, yeah, that's that's a heavy theme for him, and and the the political um, is sort of like the nuclear proliferation, because that's sort of the backstory. They have to get the president and his information to some summit and deal with China and Russia. Sure. Yeah. Um, Doesn't that sound familiar? <laughs> and uh, yeah, and and really the take on on New York City mm -hmm. as a as a, what if the whole thing is a prison. <laughs> well, and you also have to realize, as you well know, um, you you lived through all this. The early '80s, New York City had a real crime problem. It did. It did. Had a real crime problem, and so I think that was the uh, that was again uh, John Carpenter's look at. What's the end result of unrestricted and uncontrolled crime? Yeah, yeah. And then, actually, somewhere along the line, Rudy came through. Yeah. And he, he that was the yeah, early down. 90s. Right, yeah. But yeah, like clamped down. Yeah. Uh, and then people didn't like that. Yeah, you can, you can overcorrect at times. <laughs> yeah. But they didn't make it a prison. I mean, that's a lot to abandon. The entirety of Manhattan Island is a lot to abandon. <laughs> um, Isaac Hayes, yeah, as the Duke, mm -hmm. a little daring to put a black man as the, the really bad, or, or was no no sensitivity whatsoever. I I you know I don't know if it was daring as much as uh, it, tone it, deaf maybe. Well, I I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know if that if that 
if that struck the chord back then, then it, know, that it would yeah. now, and you're like, oh, you made the black guy the yeah, guy. right guy. Yeah. I mean, I think they just said, let's just take the sort of the scourge of New York, and 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 this is the guy who sort of pimped himself up to the top, <laughs> which is kind of how he plays it. I think it was just more odd that he chose Isaac Hayes. <laughs> Yeah. Rather than somebody like Richard Roundtree, as who's known, who's known for yeah, being the yeah. big dude kind of thing, Isaac Hayes did some acting, but not not at the level of uh, you know. I mean, he was still a musician, I think, more than anything else. And I don't think that he brought out the best in Harry Dean Stanton. Harry Dean Stanton does seem kind of phoned in. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Same thing with Adrian Barbeau, but I mean, she was. I think they were in a relationship by that point. I can't remember whether they broke up with Deborah Hill yet. Uh, John Carpenter okay, did. Carpenter. Yeah, but I mean, he worked with Adrian Barbeau on a lot of stuff. So, I mean, they, 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 they she shows up in almost, I mean, because she was in The Fog, and uh, she shows up in a lot of his, yeah. his, she did a TV movie with him, um, with Warren Hutton. All right, Kevin Carr, the movie is Escape from New York. It is on Amazon. It's on Freebie, which is the free Ooh, version. Kevin, so you do have Kevin, to deal with I some ads. I do ads. not like that. We, it's because of ads. ads. Yeah. The ads are annoying, yeah. as they always have been for me. Well, you can pay three bucks and rent it and watch it. Yeah, yeah, and that was on Apple that you could rent it, or well, you could, yeah, most places you can rent yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Or you can go buy a physical media disc because those things are going to be going away soon. <laughs> what do you advise our audience? Check it out. Well, look, if you're a Carpenter fan, it's one of his most beloved classics. It's not my favorite, but I think if you like that early '80s Carpenter stuff, yeah, definitely. the credits from